Wow. Jeez. Yeah. So let's talk. We talked a, a bit about the art. Let's talk about your, um, you know, living away from the. Oh yeah. The U.S. Sure. and like, what has that been like to be? And how can away I get from there? here? <laughs> right for so long. It's probably good now. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> oh man. Well. Of course, in the last few years, people have asked, aren't you getting, don't you get homesick? And I go, no, not anymore, not anymore. Um, in the beginning, I was so naive. Uh, you know, you grow up um, with, you know, I pledge allegiance to the flag every day. And, um, and you just think America is the best and the greatest and of everything. And you go, I go to Holland and I think, oh, they have washing machines and dryers here. I didn't know that. And, um, so stupid and naive, and um, and slowly, um, you know, you you compare everything to what you know and you think is therefore right, and and the shift was very, very slow. And but what slowly dawned on me is um, um, Americans they have a very good work ethic. Um, but part of that work, work ethic is about that this is because there's no safety net. You have to build your safety nets. You're going to work your butt off um, if you want to feel secure in America. And here, they have a much better safety net. Um, and people tend to have balanced lives here. They do their work. They have their family. They have their friends. They do things. They have vacations. I, I you know, in America... If you ask someone, how was your vacation? At least that was my experience. They'd say proudly, I haven't had a vacation in eight years. That's how hard I work. And here, oh, sure, I got photos. I'll tell you about my vacation. They're very proud of it. And um, um, so it's a different mindset. Of course, I'm talking about Europe. And I'm talking specifically about the Netherlands. In Italy, for instance, you know, that's even more you know it's it's you know sitting in the sun and having your wine and and it's a different climate um but um the health insurance here is fantastic um i don't pay much and i get everything uh, which is nice um the taxes are high but you see the results of the taxes i remember reading an article in the New Yorker, that's that's one thing I hold on to is the New Yorker. I get I've had a subscription for years now, and um, I think it was Greenwich, Connecticut, or Old Greenwich, Connecticut, where uh, you know hedge fund managers live, and they have tons of money. And they in Connecticut, I don't think you pay state taxes, and they have great lawyers, and they figure out how to not pay taxes, especially state taxes. And um, the, one of the wealthiest enclaves in America, the roads are in poor condition. Because not, these wealthy people are not paying their taxes. They figured out ways to avoid it. And so here you have great roads. You know all the kids are having a very good education. Um, very rarely do you see people on the street, homeless people. Um, if you do see them, it's mostly because they've, um, they have psychological problems, not because um, there's no help for them. Um, so it's... In a lot of ways, it's a great place to live. And, and as an American, you know, I, I consider myself a New Yorker living in America. And here I consider myself a Dutchman because I have the Dutch nationality as well now, a Dutchman uh, living in Europe. I, being from America, I tend to think of myself in Europe rather than in Holland. So, um, um, and, and, and like the states in America and the areas of America, the areas and countries in Europe are, are, are different as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I loved, uh, I loved Europe. I was 12. So I, I didn't enjoy it very much. But I but I remember loving being there. Um, mm -hmm. The feeling of being there was very different. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was just no, there was no McDonald's that I liked and stuff like that. Was, I liked the food because I was 12. Yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, I want to move somewhere. I was thinking somewhere in the Netherlands. Hmm, it's a great country. Or no I just saw I just saw in the travel advisor that Holland, uh, Amsterdam is the number five country in the world now to uh, best places to live, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm fortunate, especially these days, 
to um, to have the option to uh, to be here. Um, yeah. So has it changed your like now kind of being from the outside and looking at the the U.S. Has it changed your perspective on the U.S.? Definitely, definitely. You know, I grew up thinking we're the greatest country in the world. We're such we're, we're really good people and and and. Americans in general are, they're generous, they're good. And when people from Holland go to America or to New York, they come back and say, what a great country. They're so nice, the Americans are so nice. Um, but um, yeah, um, you very slowly, you, you, for instance, Holland is a country that's small. The country in size fits four times into the state of New York. That's the size of the Netherlands. Um, and Holland is a country where, um, I mean, in the 17th century, Holland, Amsterdam was the center of the world. It was the Dutch Gilder was uh, the international currency. The stock exchange was founded in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Um, and it's always, they've been a trading nation. So the world has always gone through the Netherlands. They're always in contact with the world. And in America, I realized, they're pretty isolated, especially in the middle of the country. It's an isolated country. What's going on in America? And oh yeah, something happened somewhere else, but that's not interesting. Um, so that's a big difference. Um, and um, you know, you uh, you know, I explain to people here, um, you know, about the guns. I'm constantly trying to explain the guns, and I say, well. You know, you have to understand it's really in the DNA of Americans, you know, with the, the Minutemen and the British and, and you know, the, the colonies and they were tax overtaxing them and they formed militia groups and the, and the revolutionary war started and they fought the English back and they got their freedom because of their guns, they had arms and then, you know, they took the land away from the Indians with guns and they defended the land from the Indians with guns and it's just it's in our DNA, Americans. It's it's patriotic, even. Um, and um, here they don't, they just quite don't understand it. And I have, uh, I grew up. My dad was almost a professional baseball player. He was a pitcher. And um, me and my two older brothers, we always played baseball. When I see a kid with a baseball bat in the mitt, I get nostalgic and and warm, thinking about the time I spent with my dad and. And I had a brother-in-law, he's passed away now, and he grew up hunting with his dad. So I think when he sees guns in a gun rack, he has a warm, nice feeling about his dad and the wonderful times they had together. So it's, yeah, it's uh, different for everyone. Yeah, I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, we're really, we're a really new country too. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, yeah. As comedian, uh, one, I, I can't remember who it was, but they said, America's like a 15 year old that found his dad's porn magazine and gun. <laughs> <laughs> I just <Yeah>. went crazy. <laughs> We're kind of new. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think a lot, a lot of the people in the, the middle of the country and people clinging to guns, right? Like uh, we've lost everything, like the ability, economic mobility and every, like, so people have lost so much in this like last thing that they're clinging to of like, this is my freedom is mm. that gun like that and what they're taught that that represents. And yeah, I think you're right. People have nostalgia from, you know, maybe hunting or shoot, like, especially when where gun culture is really steeped in parts of the country. It's like people grow up like my first gun. And I mean, I wouldn't know anything <laughs> about what that that yeah, is like sure. but yeah like it's it's certainly really steeped into the the culture and now you know losing um yeah i guess losing the ability to provide for a family or th you know feeling like they're in so much chaos that last thing to cling yeah. to is is that gun but to yeah. uh to our detriment and, and all the all the wars america has fought and, and the traumatized soldiers that have come back and they've all they're all been trained to use guns and yeah it's just um it just permeates the culture the thing about guns that i find interesting is that i actually i i don't have a gun and i have no interest in having a gun but i also live in vermont i mean i don't hunt i don't do anything like that but um mm -hmm. 
and I don't feel like I'm in constant danger of being invaded or anything. <laughs> so I just don't want one. But what I do not like about guns is how final they are. I really don't like the idea that they could accidentally go off. And then, of course, they would say to me, well, it's because you're not trained with them. You're not comfortable with them. Like, yeah, but I, do I need to be comfortable with them? Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't really yeah. know why I would need to be comfortable with them. But yeah. that being said, I do have a nine millimeter Beretta blank gun that I used for filming uh, some movies that I've made. And I love that gun. It doesn't shoot bullets, but it's so fun to hold. And it's the same one that uh, Mel Gibson used in Lethal Weapon 1. The, oh. you know, and, and it, yeah. and it just, I love the feeling. I love the, I love it, it. It just feels so fun to hold, hmm. but I wouldn't like it if it actually fired bullets at all. Okay. I would be then like, Oh, now it's like, I could do something horrible with this by accident or someone else could have it. Yeah. And it's because I, w I wasn't brought up with guns and, yeah, and right. but right. I, I, but you're right. I mean, I, I know what the, the intoxication of holding one that, I mean, it looks exactly like a Beretta. It's amazing looking. And, mm. and I'm talking like this, but I still think there should be gun control. And I, I actually have to make a choice not to buy a gun because I know, even though I would like it, I know that they're dangerous in right. so many right. ways. It's right. like a thought process I have to go through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah. So I, I try to explain that here. And, and um, yeah, it's, um, I mean, you know, They've had devastating wars here in World War One, World War Two, and and what happened to the Jews in Amsterdam, and yeah, yeah. So, what is it like talking to people there about, especially watching what's unfolded in the trajectory in in recent years uh, in the U.S.? What are people's sort of perspectives on that as uh, observers? They, they. Um... I keep wanting to speak Dutch. They, I, this is great. I'm having an English conversation for more than an hour now. This is nice. Um, they um, uh, they get upset and nervous about the constant shifting in America. Um, that there's no, they don't. America doesn't seem to stay on a certain course. Um, you know, it's a new president. It's like, oh God, now what? Now what's going to happen? Um, um, that's unsettling. For instance, you know. If you think about what happened in uh, Ukraine now, and consider if Trump was president, um, this would have taken a whole different course. And um, um, so that sort of thing. Um, the, I think in Holland now, there's there are hundreds of political parties, but basically there's like 22 political parties. And the government is a coalition government, so it's formed by three or four parties. I think now, and normally two or three, but it's getting a bit splintered, the political landscape here. Um, but um, like explaining the guns to the Dutch, I can explain the Dutch to you a bit, is that this is, this is a country that everyone is threatened by, by water here. We're below sea level to a large extent, not the whole country. So it's like, we all have a common enemy here and, and, um, and they have um, something, that they call here the the polder model the polder model polder is land that was wet and they take the water out and they reclaim the land and that piece of land is called a polder and the polder model is um that we compromise we talk we hash things out and we come up with compromises and that's called the polder model here and i'm thinking my goodness if even a bit of that existed in america between the political parties yeah yeah it sounds too much like reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's a it's a it, it works a lot of the times but um i mean we have a far right party here as well and and um and a very religious party here as well but they've they've got like two percent of the vote um um it's a pretty but another thing is um i have friends i know people i have no idea what their political what, who, what, who, how they vote. It's not on their, the bumpers of their cars. It's not on their baseball hats. It's not on their t-shirts. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. So if you were to compare someone here, like say Bernie Sanders, who's considered far left, yeah. how would you compare that to someone that's far right 
in your country because i've heard that his far left when you go to europe it's like it's not that left mm. yeah um well we have we do have a far right party and they they're pretty popular and that's mostly uh we don't want um uh more immigrants in the netherlands um mm. we don't want especially moroccans and and uh, turks from turkey uh, that's a long story how that all started here but um to a large extent that's because um holland is a, a very wealthy country it's a small country and it's a, a very highly popular deeply uh, densely populated country so they want to make sure there's housing enough for the dutch there's there's enough for the dutch that's that mentality a bit and far left yeah i don't think no that's not it's not that far left. <laughs> I mean, oh, really? It's, it's, um, uh, I say that in the sense that, um, you know, um, that, uh, let me give you an example. Um, in 84, I had a large, I did a large family portrait for me the whole summer. It's a very wealthy family. And the, I was in the car driving with the father. And uh, I said to him, um, Jan, you make, you make a lot of money. And how much do you, pay, if you don't mind me asking, what do you pay in taxes? He said about 72% my income. I said, wow, does that bother you? And he said, no, not at all. I drive around the country. I see, I see the roads are in great condition. I see no one is homeless. Um, things are taken care of. All the kids in Holland get a good education. No, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. I said, wow, okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's like the United States in the 50s, right? Is it, wasn't it yeah. like 90% taxes for the rich or something like that? Or I mean, wasn't that much really? I remember see, hearing that, but okay. I don't know if it was ninety, but it was he, it was really, a lot, a lot higher. It was ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so the the left mentality. I mean, I think what Dutch considered kind of normal and cooperative, and and people taking care of each other. Americans would consider that pretty far left socialism. Yeah. 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 That American individualism and yeah, and I think you're seeing it now even more. There's just complete loss of community and connection, and that's what's driving you know yeah. a lot of our our issues. Whereas it seems like other countries have that sense of for the good of the many, you know, and that sense of taking care of one's community and seeing the value and in investing in somebody outside of yourself and all of those things. Yeah, I, I can understand it as well. I mean, every country is different, their, their history. Like I said, the Dutch, the common enemy to see, we got to band together here. That's sort of in their DNA a bit. And in America, it's like wide open spaces, go there, you're a free person, make the most of it, uh, the sky's the limit, um, and um, see, see how far you can go with this sort of the American mentality. And I can understand that that's something very special. And there are people who don't want that taken from them with, um, you know, sharing and, and uh, thinking of everyone else and not just yourself. Um, yeah, it's, it's, everyone has their own, every country has their own um, makeup and, and um, history. What is, what? Uh, is the government known for any corruption or like, or a lot of corruption at all, like your government? If uh, no, if there is corruption, no, not at all. If there is corruption, it comes to the surface. And and uh, for instance, recently we had a, a thing where the government decided a more right wing government decided um, we have to really crack down on these people who are taking advantage of, of um, you know, uh, social benefits. And uh, they decided to do a crackdown. And but what they did was they were um going they were they were identifying the peop the perpetrators on a racial profile that that's the moroccans immigrants um they just did that and it had to do with um getting money for for daycare for your kids to be in care of the daycare and they get a certain amount of money and suddenly people were being accused of you have to pay so many thousands of dollars, guilders of euros, and you have to pay so many. And they said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, I've done nothing wrong. This was a huge scandal. And this all came out and it still hasn't been solved. It's a, it's a big mess. 
and people's lives have been ruined by it. Um, but that sort of thing, uh, it can happen. Um, and maybe it isn't uh, solved uh, right away, but it gets, someone shines a light on it pretty quickly. That's, that's my impression. Oh, I'm tolerated. so curious about that. So it's, uh, so would you say that your government is, is to you guys right to the right right now? Um, or the, the yeah, right? it's more, to, it's, 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 it's sort of a liberal government, uh, meaning, um, not too many restrictions, let people do their thing, let them, let them make their money, let them, um, not too many rules and regulations. Um, yeah. I'm so confused. It is to the right, but it's liberal. Well, there's a different idea of liberal. Wow. <laughs> liberal here is, is um, um, let people, um, yeah, I guess it would be the Republicans, let the, the, the less government, less restrictions, let people like liberate. Libertarian? Them, Sorry, maybe? Yeah. Oh, wow. So really, the absence of corruption might make Republicans look better. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. You yeah, know? I mean, it's not like there's no corruption, but uh, but, but I mean, it's, it's not uh, Italy or or um, or something like that. It's um, it's um, so much I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Head I see that we have like five minutes and and um, um, Alex in case you wanted me to talk about the croissant. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes yeah. that's right. Um, in January, I, um, uh, my, my partner, Lily, we have a living a, together apart relationship. She's uh, for 17 years. She's in another town about half an hour from here, outside Amsterdam. And I'm with her in the weekend, especially during Corona. She didn't come to Amsterdam because there was nothing to do. So I would go to her. And um, she has a real house with a real bedroom and a fireplace and a garden. And uh, I'm basically living in my studio. Um, and um, so on Sunday morning, I walked in the winter, January, to get croissants to the baker. And I got my croissants and it was cold and I had a jacket on and I had a hand in one hand in my pocket and the other with the croissants. And suddenly uh, a car pulled out. So I stopped and I started walking again. And I guess my foot was behind um, a brick on the sidewalk and I went down hard and shattered my, um, my right elbow. And um, so that's, that's the croissant story. And so I've got two plates and 15 screws in my elbow since January here. Oh. Um, and um, so for, um, <clears throat> for the family Zoom, um, they were very concerned. They were waiting for me to come on the Zoom uh, from, from Holland to talk about what happened to my elbow. And they were waiting for me to come on. And I discovered on Zoom, I could play the theme from 2001, A Space Odyssey with the, with the planet there. And instead of the, you know, the baby coming over the planet, I had a, uh, had a croissant coming <laughs> over the planet <laughs> with this dramatic music. And um, I called myself, um, I called myself, because uh, this is all titanium, as I said, I so called myself titanium man. So after the croissant, I pushed uh, aluminum foil on my face and I, I said, behold, titanium man. <laughs> so that was the croissant story. Oh my God. Is tita titanium, is that metallic? Is, is that uh, magnetic? No, I don't think so. Actually, it, it has a very low magnetic field because in March, we were at the airport in That's Zurich. What I was going to ask. And I started walking through the metal detectors and it went off. And I said, see, there you go. And the woman said, your, your shoes had hiking boots on. Take them off because the metal. Said, oh, oh, yeah. Take them off. Walk through a second time and it didn't go off. Oh. And it was explained to me that titanium has emits a very low, has a very low magnetic field. And that's what sets off the, uh, hmm. the sensors. That's what I was going to ask about the airport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting.